Hi booktube, Lynette here and in today's video I'm going to tell you about all the books that I finished in the month of January. I actually had a great month in January, much better than I expected it to be. I enjoyed all the books I read, there was no DNFs, there were no books that I thought why am I reading this and in fact most of it I really really actually enjoyed. No five star reads um, but plenty of three and four star reads. So without further ado, the first book that I read in the month of January is the in-depth read-along pick for the month and that was Seduction in Death by J.D. Robb. This book is, as I've talked about in all my previous videos, it's about Eve Dallas who is a New York police and security detective and she works specifically in the homicide department and in this book she has a murder to solve what I really liked in this book is that at first um, we are given an idea of who the actual killers are to start with and I really liked this because instead of going down the who done it route it went down the how did they do it route and I really enjoyed this this idea um, it's not something I see very often in crime novels so I was really pleased to follow along. I've talked about these books a lot in previous months so I'm not going to go into the real gushy, I really enjoyed it, it was a great book, you should read it. Um, but again it was a great start to the reading month, I was a bit apprehensive about starting January because it was the first month of my spin the wheel um, TBR picks and I decided to start with Seduction in Death because I know I enjoy the books and I knew it would give me a really great boost and get me going for the month of January and it did exactly what I expected it to, so I was really pleased with that. The second book that I picked up in the month of January was the first of my two TBR Spin the Wheel picks, and this was Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This is a book I've had for a few years on my Kindle, and I've been wanting to get around to it, but never finding the time or never finding the inclination, and it was just one that I really needed a little push to get into. This book is about a woman called Mia Corvair who at the age of 10 years old is where we start the book and it's on the day that her father has been branded a traitor and killed for treason and her entire family is condemned for it. Mia manages to escape and she's taken in by a man who teaches her the beginnings of the ways of an assassin and then sends her off a few years later to an assassin school. And the, that's where the story, main bulk of the story takes place, is in the Assassin's School. Mia makes friends, she also makes enemies, and there is a wider mystery going on within this because there is going to be, um, at the end, there's going to be some uh, friction and Mia has to prove herself and prove herself worthy. And I really enjoyed the book. Um, it's it, it's fantasy so it is right up my street anyway uh, so I don't know why I was apprehensive about picking this one up in the past um, but I really should have read, read it much sooner than I did. Um, I really enjoyed it, I really enjoyed Jay Kristoff's writing style and I really like Mia as a character. Uh, sometimes I find that female characters in fantasy books can be a bit whiny um, or maybe not really developed well enough but I actually really, really liked Mia and I could get on board with her and the way she thought. Um, I especially loved her best friend in this book who is not actually a flesh and blood character. It's actually a character of Smoke called Mr Kindly who takes the form of a cat and he's kind of like a subconscious type character. Um, but they have conversations and the banter between them was just excellent and I laughed all the way through with all their interactions and in fact at one point Mr Kindly does a disappearing act and I liked him so much that I was actually more worried about him than I was about how Mia was coping without him. Um, but it's again, it's a coming of age story in the world of fantasy and Mia has um, demons to slay, she has enemies uh, that from when she was 10 years old she's actually vowed to get back at the men that um, branded her family traitors and her ultimate goal is to kill them. This book sets her on that path um, and I'm really intrigued, I really wanted to get on to God's Grave 
but not enough to make my book buying ban. I actually tried to see if I could get it from the library in, in either audio or ebook format, and unfortunately I can't. And I can't get it from my library in um, paper or hardback format because my current library is closed and is um, the nearest library. As far as I'm concerned, under COVID conditions, it's not worth traveling to go and pick up a book from there. So I'm a bit stuck. I really want to carry on with the story. I think if you like fantasy, I think if you like assassin stories, I think if you like um, the underdog coming through to best the, the bigger man, then I think you would really enjoy this book. And I'm looking forward to eventually at some point breaking the book buying ban and moving on to God's grave. So book three was An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This was our pick for the Just One More Page book club. I'll leave a link down below to um, Jess's channel, Jess McGlynn, who actually runs the book club. And I'll try and leave a link to the Instagram page as well. Come along and join us. This year we're doing um, different genres of books um, so that we can push each other out of our comfort zones. And January was fantasy standalones. I like fantasy anyway, so this wasn't a push for me. Um, so I was really looking forward to this month's pick. An Enchantment of Ravens is about Isabel, who is a human painter, and she lives in a world that sits between the full human world and the world of the Fae and fairy folk. And it's about Rook, who is Prince of the Autumn Court. And he uh, decides to have his painting done by Isabel because she is this fantastic painter who is quite revered within the fairy court and unfortunately Isabel makes a mistake and she paints a human emotion into Rook's face and Rook doesn't know this until he unveils it in his court and sadly this is um, an offence which is punishable by death so Rook comes to take Isabel to his kingdom to carry out the punishment the story then follows with them travelling through the fairy world and obviously how they figure out how they're going to avoid um, Isabel being killed eventually and they come across a court in the spring court and um, they spend some time there and this is where a lot of the action actually happens. Unfortunately for me, I enjoyed this book, but there wasn't enough of the fantasy, really. Um, Although I enjoyed what there was, I haven't read a lot of fairy fantasy stories, so I don't have a lot to compare it to, unlike some of the others um, in the book club did. But also it's a romance story, and again, there was nowhere near enough of the romance for me to enjoy it either. I felt that there was definitely something missing. Um, I think Margaret Rogerson, I think you can tell that, fantasy, that um, romance isn't her bag, because she chose to tell rather than show us that they'd fallen in love. Apparently, they fell in, apparently Isabel fell in love with Rook while she was painting his picture, but you don't really get any of the story of them being together and interacting while the, the painting is being done. So I don't get where it came from that they'd fallen in love or that Isabel, what Rook was that made Isabel fall in love. And again, with Rook, I have no idea what he sees in Isabel either. So I feel that the romance side of it fell flat. For that reason, I couldn't really get on board with them as a couple because there wasn't enough of them falling in love um, to be able to make that connection with them. Also, on the fantasy side of it, uh, like I say, a lot of it is a travel story. So they're traveling through the Fey world. But again, there was questions that weren't answered. So Isabel lives in this place called Whimsy, which sits in between the human world and the fairy world. But why does it exist? How does it exist? Do humans in the main world know about it? Um, and if they do, do they want to be there? Um, and also there were questions about the fairy folk. There, Rook wasn't the only one that uh, Isabel saw human emotions in but they're not supposed to be able to feel human emotions. So why was Rook different? Why was Rook able to fall in love? There are other characters that she sees human emotions in. Why are they retaining those emotions when they're supposed to be fairy folk? And it just didn't make sense to me. And then at the end of the book, the way the book ended, 
again it just did not make sense how how can Isabel be the person that she is at the end of the book I don't because she's human um I can't really say any more than that because it would spoil it for you but again I just don't get it and I think that's probably why I kept it to a, a three three and a half star read because I enjoyed it but I was just left with so many questions and it, although it's, I feel like I need to reread it to answer those questions, but I feel like if I reread it, I won't get those answers as well. So I'll um, I'll just have to let that one sit, and maybe I'll try another book by her in future. I, I certainly enjoyed her writing style. There was nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I think I really would get on with reading more of her books. And I I think Enchantment of Ravens I think was actually her debut novel, so maybe maybe it improves as it goes and and maybe that's something i should investigate in the future is is looking into more of her work and the fourth book that i read in the month of january was the second pick on the spin the wheel tbr and that was blaze of secrets by jesse donovan this is the first book in a paranormal romance series and written by jesse and it's a series that she's put to one side for now, but I wanted to get going because I enjoy her writing style. Um, so I was really looking forward to picking this up. This book is about um, a couple called Kiara and Jackson. Kiara is a member of a race called the Feyru who are hidden within the human realm and they can actually control the four elements. So earth, air, fire and water. Kiara is a fire elemental user and she has been locked up in a prison for the fairy because although they are mostly hidden within um the human race there are people who know about them and they do get locked up when they're identified for the safety of the human race kiara has decided that there is something dangerous about her her own magic because of something that the people in the prison are doing to her and doing with her blood um, so she decides to kill herself, so trigger warnings for attempt at suicide. But Jackson comes to her rescue beforehand. Now, she doesn't know who Jackson is at the point that he rescues her. Uh, he, She just knows that this black-clad man turns up in her cage and whisks her away to freedom. She then has to learn to control her magic because she's um, not been able to use it for a while because of something else that they had been done to her in prison. And she actually then has to, to learn to interact with people in the normal world. She's been locked up since she was preteen. Um, so she has no idea about the human world, really, um, other than what she remembers from before she was locked up. And... She then starts to fall in love with Jackson. Um, again, it's another one where the romance wasn't quite believable. There wasn't enough show. There wasn't quite enough tell either. Um, it was more lust at first sight rather than love at first sight for me. And I didn't really get um, the progression from lust to love with this couple. However, I did believe in them um, because I liked the banter between the two of them. They were quite uh, sassy and short with each other and it really um, made for some fun interaction and some fun conversations. So I really enjoyed that side of it and I think that's what actually made me believe in them as a couple. I really like the world building in this. Uh, Jessie Donovan is very good at explaining the background to the different races that she has in her books. And I really enjoyed this. So I really understood what the Feyre were and how they could control um, the elements and what they could do with them and that there was no crossover between that as well. So I'm looking forward to actually moving on at some point and picking up the next book in the series because I do own the next book in the series. I actually invested um, a few years ago in all the books that Jesse Donovan had out at that point. Uh, so if you like romance, if you want something that's a bit more paranormal, then give Jessie a go. She has quite a few series out and all of them are really enjoyable. So after that, I was then a bit stuck. I'd finished the four books that were set on my TBR before even half of January was over. Um, so I was a bit stuck for what to read next. 
So what I decided to do was to go back into my Kindle because I have it organised by collections in the month and year in which books were purchased. I decided to go back to past Januaries and have a look and see if anything took my fancy. And one book did, and that is The Tommy Knockers by Stephen King. Now, if you've seen um, my wrap ups from last year, you'll know that I read a couple of Stephen King novels last year. And I really, really started to get the bug back for his books. I used to love them when I was a teenager. I absolutely adored his writing. But kind of in my 20s, I kind of fell out of love with, with that sort of story. Um, but I was really looking forward to it. And The Tommy Knockers is one that I read quite early on in my Stephen King journey. And I enjoyed. It's one of the ones that I remember really, really loving. So when I saw that it was sat unread in my Kindle as the Kindle version... I had to pick it up and I'm so glad I did. It took me a little while to read it. Um, I found it quite heavy going. It was an 800 page novel on Kindle. I don't remember it being that chunky a book when I owned the paperback version. Um, so I'm not quite sure what, what's happened there. But the story, it's, it's not horror. It's not thriller. It's not suspense. It's a little bit more on the sci-fi side, um, which I think is not quite what Stephen King is known for um but I I just really enjoyed it so the main character one of the main characters Bobby Anderson she's out walking in the woods one day and she trips over something that turns out to be a bit of metal sticking out um of the ground and she decides to dig it up to find out what it actually is the other main character is a character called James Gardner Gard for short and he is a poet who's off at the point that Bobby makes his discovery doing poetry readings. And he's also an alcoholic and he has a bit of an alcoholic binge. And something compels him at the end of this binge to go home because he knows Bobby's in trouble. The story is then how this thing in the earth, which you know fairly early on is an alien spaceship, takes over the minds of the people who are around it and the people in the nearby town the town of Haven and it goes from there and it's how they um they're obviously Bobby and Guard are digging up the spaceship um Guard is a little bit immune to the effects of the spaceship but Bobby isn't and the spaceship is slowly converting Bobby and the rest of the townspeople into something other than human um, and it's about all the horrific things that happen. So there is a little bit of horror. It's about all the horrific things that happen as the townsfolk are being transformed. And I don't know why I enjoyed it. But I just did. It sounds like something quite gruesome and gross, and it is in some ways, um, especially all the descriptions of people just spouting blood from, from, from different orifices, um, losing their teeth, um, hearing music in their heads it it's just it was all a little bit weird and I haven't read it for many years so I'd forgotten a lot of the content of it but I really I really enjoyed it and it just cemented the fact that I do actually love Stephen King and I really need to get back on a real reading kick um so that I can read more of his work and I'm looking forward to the next time one comes up I'm really glad I picked it up it took me a little while to read it. Like I say, it's quite heavy going. There was a lot of pages um, and there was a lot of information to absorb. Um, again, Stephen King, his endings can be a bit flat. And I did find it with this one. It kind of just, it was a little bit predictable and it just ended. Um, and you don't really get any real aftermath and how how there's a recovery um from from what's happened and that's the bit that was missing for me is that is the lack of recovery of all the fallout from what's actually been happening in the uh in in the previous weeks and months that this story is set over so the sixth book that i finished in january was the third book in a series of novellas and this was a lady's heart by vivian arend this is her takini shifters series this is part of her wider paranormal romance that she's been writing set in uh, mainly in Alaska. And this is about bear shifters in the main in this case. Mandy, who is um, 
I kind of, uh, it, it's quite alluded to that she is a princess. She's certainly Lady Amanda, um, is in some trouble. Uh, there are some people searching for her and she's not sure whether they are friend or foe. A friend of hers, um, Justin, who is also a bear shifter, uh, is um, in the security services and he's decided that Mandy is his forever partner, even though bear shifters don't have forever mates um, in this world that Vivian Arend has written. So she, um, he's, but he's decided that, yes, uh, she's the one he wants to be with uh, for the rest of his life. So the story goes from there. Justin is going to protect her and he whisks her away um, further north into Alaska to uh, a place where her friend, where his friends are and where he can protect her better. And it's just about them learning about each other. It's quite a light because it's a novella. Again, there's not a lot of story um, to tell. So you don't really get much of them falling in love. You just know that they they really like each other. They want to be together. And in fact, I think from memory, because I've read the previous books a few years ago now, I think part of their story is actually in previous books as well. So this is, this is a continuation of their story, really, rather than um, a complete story on its own. And like I say, it's a novella, so it's actually quite short, not a lot of space to get a lot of the, the romance in. Um, however, they you do see them uh, falling in love a little bit and learning about each other and how Mandy comes to accept that while Justin might be a big, bad, grizzly bear of a brute, um, he's actually quite sweet and loving as well. And she can't resist him in the end. Um, so it's all about how they get to their happy ever after. I really enjoyed it. It was nice and light. After reading the Tommy Knockers, which was really quite heavy and took me a while to get through, it was actually really nice to get through something and finish it really quite quickly, um, which I did with this book. So I was really pleased that I'd picked it up. Plus, it put me on a step to completing a series, um, which I don't see me doing this year. So I really actually liked that fact that um, it gave me the opportunity to finish and um, make progress in a series, which I'm not sure I'm going to do. So I was really pleased with that. So following on from that, because I was then quite keen to make progress in a series, I picked up Wild Prince, again by Vivian Arend, and again it is the final book in the series that she's written called Takini Shifters. And again, I enjoyed it, didn't blow me off my feet. Um, I think this book could have done with being a novel rather than a, than a novella. It's about Cole, a wolf shifter, who had a prophecy made about him at birth, and how he's been living his life according to the prophecy, waiting for the prophecy to take effect. But he knows that the prophecy won't take effect until he finds his mate. His mate turns out to be Danny, who we are introduced to in the previous book. She is Mandy's sister and she is a bear shifter. And again, she doesn't really know anything. All she knows is that the life that she was brought up to lead is not the life she wants to lead. And she's actually a fully trained assassin um, in some ways. Um, but she's certainly um, got lots of uh, skills that you wouldn't necessarily need in the regular day-to-day -day world. She and Cole um, meet up and they spend some time together locked up in a cabin um, in the north of Alaska and from there they then um, end up being taken over by the prophecy. Now Cole doesn't really tell Danny about the prophecy the story doesn't really explain very much about the prophecy and I don't really get how we got from the prophecy to the ending of the book and to the positions that the two of them have in this world. It, it all feels a little bit, um, like I say, it needed more time, I think. It needed more explanation and I think that's why I kept it to a three stars is because there just wasn't enough story there um, to explain everything that was going on and also it's the end of the series as well. So it didn't really um wrap too much up it felt for me um so i did i did enjoy it i've always enjoyed vivian aaron's books whenever i've picked one up um and she is an author that i would quite happily pick up books from in the future um i just i just felt a little bit let down that there wasn't enough storytelling and that it needed to give me a bit more 
um, and I didn't feel able to believe in Cole and Danny as a couple because I don't think there was enough interaction between them in the real world for them to actually learn about each other and realise that actually they were meant to be together. So again, I'd reread it at some point, um, but probably not in any great hurry. Um, I'd be quite happy to just move on to other things. But again, it was another light lifting read after the heaviness of the Tommyknockers and it was carrying me towards the end of January. Um, so I was really and I was really glad to actually wrap up a series that I've had ongoing for quite a few years now and m finally moved one off of my TBR. I should also add that uh, Wild Prince and A Lady's Heart were both TBRs, um, both on my TBR. They were both books that I've bought in previous years and hadn't got to yet. So I'm really glad that actually, um, as well as the two books on my TBR wheel, I'd knocked another three books off when I include the Tommy Knockers as well. I've knocked another three books off of my TBR for the month. And finally, I have a confession to make. I broke my book buying ban. Yes, I broke my book buying ban in January. Um, however, in my defence, it's a book that I've owned previously and it's a book that I've always enjoyed when I've read it in the past. My previous copy was read to the point where the spine was no longer readable. So I think I actually do deserve to own this book because it's not one that I've bought lightly. Um, I was listening and scrolling through um, my music streaming app that I use and I came across an album that I used to listen to 20 plus years ago now and that I used to listen to while I was reading a particular book and I realised that again unlike Rose Madder which a friend gave to me last year and also um, it's on here somewhere but I've moved it now um, Deja Dead which my sister gave to me at Christmas I realised that this was a book that I never should have gotten rid of when I cleared off my bookshelves um, six seven eight years ago now and that book is The Listeners by Christopher Pike. Um, I picked this book up completely by random when I was about 17 years old. I skived off college uh, for the day and went down to Exeter with my college mates. And we went into a little independent bookshop down there. And I saw this book, this particular cover um, on the, um, a display shelf. And I was really intrigued by it. And I picked it up then and absolutely loved it. This is about um, a man called David who is in the FBI and he is tasked by his superior to go and investigate this group of people who are doing something with, and this is where the title comes from, this um, big mind who listen to everything that's going on and apparently they know things about the American government that is not widely known and they need to be investigated. Um, while there, David falls in love with one half of a set of twins that are there and then some spooky things start happening. Um, there's also an investigation into the history of the group, um, to the history of the person who runs the group because his wife, who was one half of a twin, died um, and her sister went mad and it's how all of that ties together. Um, I'm not really going to say much more than that because, um, as you can see, obviously, there is a little bit of the um, alien, so sci-fi in this, as well as um, a little bit of horror and a little bit of thriller. But I absolutely loved it. And I'm really glad that I actually broke my book buying ban to pick it up and order a copy. Christopher Pike is no longer in print, um, so you can't buy his books um, in very many places. You can only get them secondhand and they haven't been released in ebook or audio format that I've been able to find. So I'm really glad that I actually bit the bullet and picked up this copy. It's going to have a pride of place on my shelves um, and hopefully at some point maybe I'll be able to pick up more of his books. I did have a whole set of Christopher Pike books um, quite a few years ago but like I say I got rid of them all including the listeners but the listeners was the only one I'd read um, so I really really would like to read more by him because I'd forgotten how much I enjoyed his writing it goes quite quickly um, there is a lot of backstory about David and um, the type of person he is and things that have happened to him to shape him um, so I did enjoy it um, 
there's lots of world building in here and it's it's really really good so if you like sci-fi with a little bit of thriller a little bit of horror then i would give this one a go if i were you if you can get your hands on a copy so those were all the books that i read in the month of january um did you have a good reading month if you did please let me know in the comments down below i'd love to chat with you about what you've been reading as well if you've enjoyed this video then please give me a thumbs up and click subscribe and i will see you all again in another video bye